Lieberman, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Let's bring our panelists in to react now. We have the executive director of USA Strong, Aaron Elmore, there, and constitutional lawyer and legal analyst, Amir Benno. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, guys. Aaron, I'll jump right to you. I mean, uh, fiery uh, details there by the assemblyman just now on Governor Cuomo. Aaron, your thoughts? Well, the assemblyman also gave me a uh, how to on not to parent my child as Andrew Cuomo, uh, using him as an example. But listen, this just shows you the cannibalism in New York Democrat politics. And I do think that Andrew Cuomo's chickens are coming home to roast, roost rather, here, but he will roast, I'm sure, because uh, Letitia James, the AG in New York, is gunning for him. And at first I didn't understand why, because she's also a Democrat. So she is going to really go after him for this nursing home scandal because she wants his job. So further cannibal, cannibalization there. And also the reason why his former aide, Cuomo, that is, came out is because she quickly realized, wait a second, if I don't tell the truth here about this nursing home scandal, I'm going to go down for the whole entire thing. And, you know, we watched Cuomo during the pandemic on television, so smug, so condescending, writing a book bloviating and patting himself on the back and even getting an Emmy. This just truly shows you what kind of person he is, what he's up to and what he's facing. Amir Benno, really quickly, your thoughts on this and then wanting to impeach him. I think of the impeachment that we saw in the House that happened in a matter of hours for the president of the United States. Is it that simple for the governor of New York? You work in the same field he did and, and uh, what a path he paved for those uh, conservative talk shows that we, we tuned in and listened to. But Aaron, uh, Mankow does raise a, a very upsetting point, if you will, how quickly people were posting online uh, their celebration that he had passed. Your, your thoughts on that and seeing those tweets? I saw the tweets from all of these daft celebrities and it really got me angry and sad. And what it made me think of first was, I think it was Michael Jordan who said, Republicans buy sneakers too. And I wish these people in Hollywood realized that Republicans like going to the movies too. And anymore, I think anytime you meet a conservative, they are so disgusted by Hollywood because they're not speaking to us. They don't understand us. They don't want us and they don't like us. And when they just demonized someone who was so revered and so loved, it just further cemented that Hollywood doesn't understand us and our value systems and what we believe in. Rush was a good man. He was a flawed man. We are all flawed and made in God's image. And you know what? He stood up for what was right. He acknowledged the things he did wrong. He was an inspiration to so many. He lived such a great, fulfilling life. He did three hours a day of unscripted radio. He was a workhorse. And I think he's got big shoes to fill. And now we're remembering his legacy and honoring his life. And Hollywood, you know what? They're going to see a big decrease in people who are consuming their content because half of the country, over 78 million Americans, don't want to buy what you're selling. And a number of months as well. Aaron, I think your audio is back with us here. Your thoughts on this situation and the comments made? Sorry, I had myself muted like a jackass. Having said that, what about the 47 people that were killed due to Antifa violence over these last eight months? Philadelphia, Portland, Minneapolis, New York City. This was a serious ordeal that wasn't just a taco stand. And to speak like that is really disrespectful to the families that lost their life, loved ones and all of the business owners that won't be able to reopen because they were destroyed and decimated. This is not grounded in any sort of political reality or factual reality. Joe Farbo should be honestly ashamed of himself. Uh the amount of time that we spend deciding where to go. Um, and anything that's gonna help businesses, a new business that's that's jumping off during this pandemic. Uh, kudos to you and to help the restaurant business as well, which has been decimated. I think this is terrific. Aaron Thanks so Elmore. much for coming up with this idea. Absolutely. Aaron, your thoughts? Well, I've been married almost a decade, so I never got to swipe when dating. So this is going to cure some of that FOMO I've had. <laughs> I was, I'm was i going to Philadelphia, <laughs> and I was just on Open Table, which is probably one of your slight competitors, and I was really disappointed because – I wasn't easy to find a table and a reservation, so I'm going to download Munch, get on with my girlfriends. And you know what I think is also great about it? It's a way to sort of create a conversation and be interactive and connect with your friends. So I think this is a wonderful idea. What a cheerful, great business idea. And you gave something from the pandemic and started a new business. So this is going to be a great future for Chris. I love this idea. My FOMO is cured. 
Hey, it's a great day. <laughs> yeah, you've helped out Aaron. Uh, finally, get rid of her fear of FOMO there, or FOMO rather. Chris, before you go, can you super like one of the restaurants? Is it just uh, right or left? Mm, that's his home state to visit Cancun with his family. Well, his state suffered a major power outage in the middle of a winter storm. I want to point out Cruz did apologize, but many reporters working overtime to cover this story. How? This. One reporter even tried to suggest that the senator left the family poodle snowflake at home alone. Further in the article, they acknowledge that a security member did stay behind, so snowflake was not alone. Okay. Our panelists are here to react, Aaron Elmore and Amir Benno, and many from both sides of the political spectrum notice and acknowledge that Cruz's decision to leave Texas at this time was probably the wrong one. At the very least, it was bad optics. But Aaron, what do you make of the airtime? The media is really giving this story. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. We know that this is a Democrat, it wouldn't be happening. We have to take note though, that, oh, I'm frozen. Oh, there we go, sorry. We have to take note that his dog is named Snowflake. I think that's very funny for a conservative. Having said that, I think someone in the Twitter sphere said it best. As a father, you understand what he's done. He wants to keep his children safe, get them out of the cold, but as a politician, it's not so easy to understand what he's done. As you indicated, the optics are not great on this. He probably should have stayed behind in solidarity with his constituents. But yes, the mainstream media is acting as if he has broken crazy laws and done something absolutely horrible. And if the shoe was on the other foot with a Democrat, we wouldn't be hearing anything about this. Yeah, case in point, apparently some mainstream.